Hi everyone, my name is Jasmine Alajic and I'm an Accounts Manager at Erconia EMEA. Thank you for joining Erconia Lasers webinar with Dr. Robert Silverman for an inclusive presentation on the topic of the year, longevity, optimizing health span and human performance. Dr. Silverman will lead you through the latest development in um, functional medicine approach and non-thermal laser applications for extending longevity and health span. You'll learn protocols to provide personalized healthcare for your patients. We will be happy to assist further at the end of the webinar, which for your reference will be recorded and sent out to all the attendees. I would like to alert you to the question and answer box on the right hand side of the screen, which for your use, and you can type your questions to Dr. Silverman at any time at the end of the webinar, he will answer all of your questions. And for all of you guys who don't know Dr. Silverman, he is a chiropractor, clinical nutritionist, national and international speaker, author of Amazon number one bestseller, Inside Out Health, and founder and CEO of Westchester Integrative Health Center. He was also a principal investigator on our level one laser FDA study on neck and shoulder pain. Okay, without further ado, over to you, Dr. Rob. Thanks so much, Jasmine. I appreciate it. I'm excited to be here. I am going to give you guys all the space you need on the screen by doing that and doing that. and open it up. So as Jasmina said, longevity without question is the topic of the year. I've um, been lecturing nationally, internationally on longevity. I'm a big believer in some of the hidden helps to longevity is having a robust immune system. But I will share with you protocols for longevity so you're able to optimize your health span and improve human performance. The way that I put this webinar together, the first half of the webinar will be mostly explaining what a laser does, but much more in that what nutrition and what are the components of longevity. The second half will be actually showing you specifically how the laser fits into those longevity protocols. Now, if you have any questions, as Jasmina said, please feel free to put them in the chat. I will answer them. I'm guessing that we may go a few minutes over, so strap in a little bit, just a few minutes. I wanna cover everything. And if you are gonna end up watching this on a tape record, again, send the questions in and we'll try to answer it. Uh, for those who are watching, if there's a protocol that you wanna see that we discussed in this webinar, let me know. I, as you guys saw before, I've got all my lasers in my room, all set up, ready to go. Now, just so you know, I've been using laser for 13 years. I have every laser imaginable. Um, I've got three FXs, different FXs. I've got Two, to, two base stations. I've got about three little accelerates running around. I've got the Zorona. I have everything that I'm legally allowed to have in America. But what I really want to talk about today are protocols for longevity so you can all optimize health span and human performance. I believe the key to longevity is turning on the health switches, but I do believe the master health switches are having a robust immune system. As you all know, I wrote a book called Immune Reboot. It's a bestseller. Anybody who's interested in any information on Ramoon, Ramoon, Immune Reboot, please speak to Simon, Kate, Jasmina. They'll all be very happy to uh, put that in contact with you. So some of the aging key takeaways. I believe you know, a key takeaway is the opportunity to decelerate, stop, or reverse aging by implementing therapeutic interventions. So the real question is, health span versus lifespan. What's the difference? Well, longevity is health span and lifespan. Lifespan is it's obvious. It's as long as you live. Health span is as long as you're healthy. Our goal is, of course, to increase lifespan, but to parallel lifespan with health span. I was fortunate enough to recently give a, a talk in a very exclusive club. So these people are highly educated, very wealthy. And when we talked about life and health span, there was a resounding agreement amongst the attendees that it was all about health span. They weren't worried if they were going to live to 70, 80, 90, or 100. They wanted to be healthy to the day that they passed away. So 
our lifespan versus health span. Of course, we want to increase our health span. In America, this is the first time in generations in the last few years we've actually decreased the lifespan. But I can speak as an American, if you will, that the health span is precipitously decreased. So some of these keys that we'll talk about will really enable you to increase not only lifespan, but health span. So this is from a friend of mine who owns a company. It's called Healthgevity. He really talks about, he took this from David Sinclair, hallmarks of aging. So these are targeting the root causes of aging, aging too soon and aging poorly, if you will. So genomic instability is when the DNA in the cells become damaged or mutated, leading to a decrease in cellular function and repair mechanism. Telomeres. Telomeres are the protective caps at the end of each strand of DNA. They're like the plastic caps at the end of a shoot lace. Over time, telomeres gradually shorten as the cell divides. This process can be accelerated by oxidative stress. Telomere attrition is a natural part of aging, but there are ways to slow the process down, and those ways would aid in longevity. Epigenetic alterations. They are changes in the genetic expression that are not caused by changes in the DNA sequence. Epigenetic alterations can be caused by a variety of factors, including environmental exposure, lifestyle choices, and aging itself. Targeting specific epigenetic modification actually relates to the potential to slow down aging and improve overall health. The loss of proostasis, which is truly the ability of the cells to maintain a proper balance of protein levels and structure. When proteostasis is lost, Cells are unable to properly control the levels of proteins, leading to DNA damage, telomere shortening, and age-related diseases. Dysregulated nutritional sensing. That kind of goes to the idea that longevity is flicking health switches on. Obviously, dysregulated nutritional sensing is a process that occurs as we age, where our cells become less able to sense and respond to changes in nutrient levels. This leads to a number of age-related health problems, including weight gain, insulin resistance, and chronic inflammation. So a combination of factors in the way that our cells change, the way we metabolize nutrients and alterations in a level of key hormones are involved in regulating metabolism. Mitochondrial dysfunction. All of the aforementioned can be helped by laser. This is where you can hang your hat without question. A non-thermal laser will help with mitochondrial function and stop mitochondrial dysfunction because we know the role of the mitochondria in energy metabolism is essential for maintaining cellular homeostasis and function. So mitochondrial dysfunction leads to a decrease in ATP production amongst other things. Non-thermal laser, and I'm gonna make a strong differentiation throughout this webinar about non-thermal laser. That's our cornea, it's a non-thermal, it's electromagnetic transfer of energy, whereas other lasers are more of our heating devices. The non-thermal like aconia is gonna help with mitochondrial function. Cellular senescence is another issue of a hallmark of aging. It's a process that occurs naturally as we age. The cells accumulate over time. As they do, they start to drag down a performance of tissues and organs. Senescent cells, cells that are dying, also secrete pro-inflammatory signals like interleukin-6 and interleukin-8 that damage our bodies further. Memo is a great article the Arconia gang will be happy to share it with you. It was shown that Arconia lasers, the violet light, decreased dramatically the expression of interleukin-6, and the red light decreased the expression of interleukin-8. Stem cell exhaustion. Stem cells are responsible for repair and maintenance of tissues through the body. It's not as effective. The violet light of about 520 to 530 wavelengths has been shown to dramatically impact stem cell production. Altered intercellular communication. As we age, our cells change in many ways. One of the more notable changes is the decrease in the ability to communicate with other cells. We are an interconnected organism. We speak through our bloodstream, hormones, and most predominantly through our cells and our nervous system, both of which are positively affected by applying non-thermal low-level laser. Compromised autophagy. Autophagy is a process that you typically get during intermittent fasting where cells break down and recycle their own components. So interestingly enough with that, I will share with you coming up a intermittent fasting laser protocol.
microbiome disturbance. If you've ever seen me lecture, you know I'm all about the gut. 80% of your immune cells are in your gut. It's where your macro and micronutrients are absorbed. As we age, our bodies go through a lot of changes. One of the lesser discussed changes is disturbances to the microbiome, which are the community of microorganisms that, lists, that live in our bodies. So again, I will share some very interesting protocols and data to indicate how applying the laser to the gut will help with the microbiome. Inflammation, it's a natural response to in injury or infection. Chronic inflammation can lead to tissue damage and disease during aging, chronic low-grade inflammation called inflammaging. Inflammaging is inflammation and aging, which contributes to a pathogenesis of age-related diseases. We'll give you lifestyle hacks and laser protocols to decrease inflammation. So let's take a consequence of the mitochondria dysfunction. So dysfunctional mitochondria leads to oxidative stress, decreased ATP levels, um, altered mitochondrial biogenesis, calcium imbalance, and ultimately cell death. Whereas if you're able to turn a switch on for mitochondrial function, you have mitochondria metabolizing, ATP production, respiration, calcium homeostasis, and cellular growth. Multiple pathways are affected, including sufficient myokine signal is interleukin-6, interleukin-7, interleukin-15, shifting of the membrane-bound immune regulatory factors towards a pro-inflammatory profile, impaired immune cell, and altered body composition. What did I just say? Aging muscle, as we age, the first sign is of aging is a loss of muscle mass. Look at someone who's aged. What do you notice most about a family member or friend or somebody in the street? The lack of muscle mass. Tufts University said that sarcopenia, loss of muscle mass, was the first sign of aging. Whereas I believe that muscle mass is our organ of longevity. Muscle mass is our currency of longevity. Whereas one of the biggest problems things that actually tip the scales on aging and loss of muscle mass and overall deleterious effects to the whole body is interleukin-6 release. So chronic exposure of interleukin and the concomitant release of pro-inflammatory cytokines promote pro-inflammatory effects and muscle catabolization due to interleukin-6 signaling. So clearly, I'm a big believer in eating a protein diet, a protein with a fat diet, minimize your carbohydrates, so that's going to be a critical element to overall building of muscle. I integrate the laser with those lifestyle hacks to decrease the expression of interleukin-6. So senescent cells and immunity, we both covered those. Zombie cells, we're going to get to those in this particular slide. And this slide kind of puts that all together in a nice tight bow in that senescent cells accumulate with normal aging and impede organ function. These are cells that are dying, create chronic inflammation, emit protein-destroying enzymes, and shorten healthy lifespans. So senescent cells, when they don't die, and they should become zombie cells, I talk about it like the old Boris Karloff walking around, they're spewing inflammatory cytokines, they're leading to digestive dysfunction, mitochondria dysfunction. So our inability to deal with our cell death, and it's Unfortunately, not dying and then replicating proper cell turnover is really causing a lot of inflammation. Speaking of inflammation, here you're looking at your immune system and inflammation. Inflammation is probably one of the big conversation pieces of 2024. Many immunological alterations are observed during immunosenescence. Aging interferes in a number of innate and adaptive immune cell aspects that impair or compromise their function and response. So intracellular homostasis during aging truly intensifies the secretion of inflammatory cytokines and chemokines leading to inflammation. Here's your gut. I mean, we could, again, speak all day long about your gut, but the basic premise is that you're gonna have a higher level of dysbiosis, an unleveling of good and bad bacteria as we age. So obviously, without question, a change in one's diet, lifestyle, and utilization of laser is all going to lead to having good microbes versus bad microbes. That's what dysbiosis is, unleveling of good to bad bacteria. You need more than 85% good bacteria. Dysbiosis also can lead you down a path of small intestinal bacteria. Overgrowth can lead you to leaky gut and can compromise your immune system. 
this slide really speaks to the idea of what happens when you have a compromised gut or you have a leaky gut. Specific things uh, will get through the gut, uh, minor barrier defects, increased permeabilities. These particular items, like large undigested food particles, get through the gut, stimulate an inflammatory response. It can be a food sensitivity. It can be a food allergy. It can actually lead to molecular mimicry. The crux of leaky gut is a fault in one's overall immune system, also increase aging. I believe you're only as young as your immune system. So everybody talks about longevity. And again, I wrote a book called Immune Reboot. I believe with that robust immune system, you are gonna put the brakes on the loss of health span and actually hit the accelerator and increase your health span. So it's very interesting. You know, we are now in the just long COVID uh, helping patients. No one talks about COVID-19. But some of the bigger problems that we saw and one of the biggest reasons that longevity became a real threat or the increase in our health span versus our lifespan, i.e. longevity, was the fact that most people, especially Americans, but most people in the world's immune system was dysfunctional. Our immune systems are so dysfunctional because of a gut issue. How, what I typically ask my patients is very simply this. What have you done for your guts lately? Do you have the guts to be healthy because your gut communicates with your immune system? Have we taken care of our immune system or have we taken our immune system for granted? Are all our immune systems stuck in 2020? Our immune systems were so dysfunctional. The first time our immune system looked at SARS-CoV-2, it took a picture of it. And obviously now there's derivatives, there's variants, there's cousins to it, there's family members, there's friends to it, if you will, if I could use that in a metaphoric sense. Our immune system is still producing antibodies because it's dysfunctional to what it saw in 2020, as opposed to what it's seeing in 2023. This can't be good for our longevity. Immunity is the key to longevity. So a new study from Tufts University talked about centurions, people who lived over 100, had a strong, robust immune system. This was a multinational study identifying immune resilience as a factor that influences lifespan, flu, and COVID mortality. So they gave the idea of immune resilience. I don't want to support my immune system. I want to give my immune system the ability to be resilient, to be flexible, to be able to ward off variations of different pathogens that it comes across and sees. So interestingly enough, the more immune resilient you are, the more you want to support your immune system, the better immune balance you have, the longer you will live, the better you will look. So for me talking to an aesthetic clinic right now, the idea of immune resilience, longevity, and gut health are all an intersection. Then they talked about the longevity of people who lived over 100 and their health. They all had a pristine microbiome. Fasting, I think it's a fabulous hack. I'm a big believer. Paraclesi said, fasting is the greatest remedy for the physician within. So when I talk about fasting, I usually like to refer to the idea of a 14 to 16 hour fast and an eight to 10 hour window to eat. I do like two to three meals. I try and get three meals in with all my patients. One of the reasons I like the three meals and I usually opt for a 10 hour fast is because I want to ensure people get enough protein during the day to hold on to that longevity organ called muscle mass. So fasting is that window. So here are a couple of definitives. When I lecture on intermittent fasting, and intermittent fasting, I've written multiple articles on it. If anybody's interested, well, I'm very happy to share it. Intermittent fasting, here are the, some hacks. Hack number one, the studies are powerful behind do not eat or drink in the first hour other than a glass of water. Lemon water would be best. If you're gonna have your black coffee, wait to hour two. The reason you're gonna wait to hour two is very simply, you don't wanna adversely affect cortisol. And believe it or not, coffee is so powerful. It could start with protein synthesis. So your black coffee or your coffee in hour two. Missed out in the first hour of eating, when you wake up, 
and don't eat three hours before you go to sleep. You do those two things, you're already three quarters of the way there. And that would be at minimum a 12 hour fast, which will give you all metabolic weight loss, uh, metabolic function, mitochondrial function. And the studies are without question in tow with what I just said. I like to go kick it up to 14 to 16 hours for the simple reason I get that process, which we refer to as autophagy. Autophagy won a 2016 Nobel Prize. It's the breakdown of cells using their cellular debris to make new cells. So if you're able to make new cells with autophagy, you're able to regenerate. You're able to live longer. Look what it does for immune system. You give yourself immune resilience. Look what it does for mitochondria, mitophagy. So imagine doing intermittent fasting with a healthy lifestyle and adding non-thermal laser. You have got, without question, the ability to have the panacea of health. So we're not going to go through all of this, but autophagy does a myriad of different things. Cell communication, genome maintenance, stress response, aids in metabolism, senescence, stem cells, epigenetics, and it helps with telomere length. Here's a great study on the Mediterranean diet associated with successful aging. There was an 11% decrease in cognitive impairment sticking to a Mediterranean diet. So let me talk about diet, not just Mediterranean. Mediterranean will probably be one of the ones at the top of everybody lists. In America, we have something called the standard American diet. It's sad. And everybody argues which diet is the best. Anything is better than a standard American diet. 63% of the calories, the average American, you, you people in Europe are slightly behind us, comes from ultra processed foods. The number one substance bought in grocery stores is soda pop, soda. The number one liquid bought is not water, it's sweetened beverages. So inherently, you're getting all these different toxins, microplastics with sugar. So when someone says the carnivore diet, the pegan diet, the keto diet, and I do, they all have their place. They all work. They work in comparison to the standard American diet. For me, when I pick a diet for a patient, I, I like to refer to the concept of N of one. What is the best way to optimize and personalize with that particular individual? Mediterranean diet has great studies associated with successful aging. Going back to this study, there was a 51% increase in a quality of life adhering to a Mediterranean diet, 10% higher odds of successful aging, and all how people partaking in a Mediterranean diet had the potential for better mental and cognitive health benefits. So here are my longevity hacks. Number one, nutrition, food. Let food be your medicine. Let medicine be your food. We've all heard that before. Number two, please, you had to do one thing, dramatically reduce your sugar, your starch, and your processed food. Dr. Jacqueline, who's a chiropractor, once said, if man makes it, I won't eat it. Exercise, incorporate resistance training. That does not mean carrying a barbell around with you on an airplane. You can do it with bands. Resistance training is weights. I travel all the time. I pack bands. I, I have my own body weight. Do I prefer to go to a gym in the um, hotel if they have something? Sure. Learn how to use a TRX. Learn how to use a kettlebell. Learn how to utilize a dumbbell. Sleep. Sleep may be the greatest longevity hack that you had. Last night was an awful night. It was a real aberration for me. It was a night that I got less sleep. And I haven't gotten in months. Sleep is a critical element for overall rejuvenation of all your bodily functions. It allows your brain to detox. As your brain shrinks to 40% of its size when you sleep. Health detectables. I'm wearing an aura ring. I've done uh, continuous glucose monitoring. The more that you test, the more you'll be aware, the more that you'll adhere to a day-to-day -day lifestyle change. Meditate. I wouldn't have gone to sleep if I didn't meditate. So it's a great idea. Many people get up and the first thing they do before they go to their phone is they do 10 minute to 15 minute meditation. Intermittent fasting. I, think, I, I believe that intermittent fasting is a critical hack. Kind of went over it a little bit before. 
intermittent fasting is something that virtually everybody can adhere to. I would love to seed for another webinar, love to talk about intermittent fasting with you and intermittent fasting, how it pertains to immune function and how women have to intermittent fast differently than men. Supplements. I'm going to share the supplements that I recommend for longevity hacks. Purpose, mission, community. Um, you know, we are beings that need other people around. If we have a mission, we're positive on what we do. Hormesis. I'm going to go into that. I have a few slides on that. Hormesis, hot and cold exposure. Let me be clear. Hormesis is a slight strain to the body that the body responds to in a positive light. And lastly, without question, low-level laser. You're not going to have longevity hacks. Dr. Mark Hyman, Dr. Peter Tier, wonderful docs, great books. None of them talk about laser. It's a big hack that I add when I'm on the lecture circuit because it's a critical element, non-thermal laser to longevity hacks. So to enhance longevity, a couple of big takeaways again, dramatically reduce sugar, starch, processed foods, Consume at least 30 to 40 grams of protein for breakfast, followed by another 16 grams at lunch and dinner. Increase phytonutrient intake, incorporate resistance training, and community. That was straight from Dr. Hyman's mouth. Heat shock proteins. This is why we sauna. You produce these heat shock proteins, and they protect against neurodegenerative disease. They also protect against cardiovascular disease. These heat shock proteins are great in that they promote longevity and they slow muscular atrophy. Now, after taking a sauna, I go up. I don't have a dump um, bin, a uh, cold uh, ice bath, so I try and take a cold shower. So cold shock proteins, reserve proteins, which were released from the liver, dumped into the bloodstream, anti-inflammatory, support wound healing, they increase muscle repair, they increase protein synthesis. Please understand that hormesis is a good thing to the body. It's a slight strain. In mean, fasting, it's hormesis. Your body responds, we're made to respond. Hormetic threshold is something that's vastly different. So tools to assess chronic inflammation. So for me, if I could manage and modulate inflammation, it would be a critical element to optimizing my outcomes with patients. So Sigur A is a wonderful thing I like to test for because that also lets me know if there's some damage at the tissue level or at the gut level. Fecal calproteinin usually means calprotectin, speaks to the idea that there's inflammation in the intestinal tract. Serum, high-specific C-reactive protein. C-reactive protein speaks to the idea of tissue inflammation, high sensitivity, is sensitivity in the arterial walls. Neutrophil lymphocyte, which should be a two to one ratio, or a, a normal is one to three. I like one to two, speaks to the idea that your immune system is balanced. Talked about serum cytokines, especially highlighting interleukin-6. Serum LPS, or lipopolysaccharide. Lipopolysaccharide is a gram-negative bacteria that's inside your gut. When that's expressed, it implies specifically that you have a leaky gut. This LPS expression is an endotoxin. I am currently starting a study in my office on LPS and laser therapy. You always want to test specific antibody arrays because your body's producing antibodies. That isn't always a good thing, believe it or not. And there's stool tests that really can take you and give you some valuable information. So here are my five supplements for longevity. And I know we're taking our time. I told you we may go over a little bit. It looks like I did not see any questions as of yet. We've got a full house. So here are my five. These are easy. Multivitamin, multimineral. This is something I take every day. This is something that I recommend that all my patients take. This is a standard. Omega-3 fatty acids, two to four grams. Vitamin D3 with K2, I do about 5,000 I use with K2. You've got to take D3 with K. Pre and probiotics. I think everybody's aware of a probiotic. The prebiotic feeds the probiotic to allow for a what we call a postbiotic. And everybody should take a good fruits and greens drink. It's very hard to get 10 vegetables in a day, 10 servings especially when people want to do one or two meals, which I don't agree with in intermittent fasting. Nevertheless, it's a 40 calorie uh, drink. If anybody's interested, reach out to me. I'll tell you where you can get it. Now, here are my Dr. Rob's leading edge nu nutrients for longevity. 
after I go over this, we're going to flick the switch and go and discuss long, laser for longevity. So fisetin is a polyphenol found in many fruits, vegetables, including strawberries, apples, and onions. Um, it's been studied for its potential benefits related to aging. It's shown great promise in inhibiting senescence due to its ability to act on numerous biological processes. So fisetin, you will be hearing about in this specific future. Green tea, EGCG, allows an inhibition of pro-inflammatory mediators, decrease in oxidative stress, inhibition of angiogenesis, decrease in the cell cycle arrest, inhibition of mTOR pathway. It slows the activation of tumor suppressor genes. Spermidine, it's great for DNA stability, cellular growth, cellular differentiation, and cell death. It's really shown to have great information, recent findings on preventing neurodegeneration, helping with aging and longevity, heart function, and immune function. Lutaline is also a great add. 2-HOBA is a natural molecule that is actually discovered in something we use in my house called Himalayan tartarary buckwheat. It provides a way to support the body's natural defenses against oxidative stress. BPC-157, it's a peptide that's referred to as a Wolverine supplement, has amazing healing capacities, a myriad of different possibilities. And PEA, P, fabulous things, technically referred to as a SPM or pro-resolving lipid signaling molecule. If you want to decrease inflammation, PEA is a great choice. So we are now at laser section. So I don't want to go any further. Jasmina, do we have any questions? Because we're halfway through the presentation. We haven't got any questions still, Rob. You can carry on. OK. Well, fabulous. I look forward to it. I'm going to carry on. <laughs> Thanks. Can, uh, you know what? Let's take that off. Sorry, guys. So let's talk about laser for longevity. The real question is, could non-thermal laser be the answer for longevity? I believe so. So why do I signify non-thermal laser versus other lasers? Because the laser that we're using, Marconi, is a non-thermal. I don't like lasers that promote heat. Stop a second and say to yourself, do I want to heat a person? There are instances that you would, maybe in a chronic condition but you don't want to heat a brain. You don't want to heat a nerve. You don't want to heat the mitochondria. You don't want to heat the gut. So for me, non-thermal laser could be the answer for longevity because it's non-invasive. There's no downtime. There's no pain involved. The treatment times are pretty short. I mean, if you've ever seen me use it, it's within a few seconds. It's pain relieving properties. It's known to decrease swelling, improve blood flow, enhance energy production. Again, a huge takeaway, optimizes mitochondrial function. It's anti-inflammatory. It has immune boosting properties, produces stem cell production, which is a critical element for longevity, decreases stress hormone, it is neuroprotective, it downregulates stress responses, accelerates wound healing, and in the aesthetic light, it upregulates collagen production, fat loss, cellulite reduction, and skin conditions. Jasmine and I were just having a conversation before, and I was kidding around, and she said, you know, your hair looks different. And I said, great, you know, um, I haven't done anything, you know, I haven't, meaning I haven't used any Rogaine or Propecia or plugs at this point. All I've been doing religiously have been lasering my hair, and it's making it more vibrant and holding on to those follicles that are so common males in my age bracket. So everybody take a very good look at this. The most, for me, the most energetic laser in the world, Arconia has, and you have access to the most energetic laser outside the US. Take a good look. You have abilities to get the, well, you really have ability to get the green light too, but red light is 650 or less. The Coney uses 635 nanometers. The green light is about 520, and the violet light is about a 405 nanometer. Now, once you go over 720 to 760, you're only producing about 1.5 electron volts. 
unfortunately, for photochemistry, it's all about photochemistry. It's about electromagnetic transfer of energy. It's not about power. A minimum photo energy is required to cause electrons to jump to higher orbits. Can't do it with any wavelength, which is typically associated with a hot laser over 720. So the red light will affect the electromagnetic transfer of energy, will allow mitochondria coupling, if you will, and electron uh, jumping from one cell to the other. Obviously, as you go down this particular visible light scale, green is better than that for electromagnetic transfer of energy, and the best one is the violet light. So understand that you always, in my opinion, you want to use multiple wavelengths. Each wavelength has different functions and properties, but right now you're looking as far as electromagnetic transfer of energy. So the violet light allows in the electron transport chain to open up what we call complex one and two. The green light works with complex three and the red light works with complex four. You have the ability with these three lights or a combination of them to positively affect the mitochondria. What is one of the number one problems that we've seen with aging? The mitochondrial dysfunction, one of the quickest ways, one of the most effective ways, one of the ways that are backed by a litany of articles is to utilize low level laser or electromagnetic transfer via a non thermal laser. So here is the Aconia lasers that have been studied. The 635 nanometer laser allows for mitochondrial activity, proliferative activity, allows for the production of interleukin 10. Interleukin 10 is a critical interleukin. It is an interleukin that actually turns on health promoting properties and Reverse shuts off interleukin-6, interleukin-8, and F kappa B, et cetera. So you always want to have a red light if you can as a starting point. The 405 nanometer, the violet light, allows for the reduction of apoptotic cells on fibrous tissues and an improved breakdown of scar tissue due to a high electron volt. 532, reduction of Tg beta, but it's great for stem cells. You really want to apply the violet and the green to the gut especially within the stem cells, because stem cells turn over in the gut in four to five days, which allows epithelial cells in the gut, allowing gut lining to heal in five to seven days. Simon always says, Rob, do me a favor, make sure you make a distinct, clear differentiation between non-thermal laser and hot lasers. Well, here's a distinct determination. Non-thermal laser improves cellular function and the stability of the mitochondria. It can, without question, non-thermal laser can dampen inflammation, improve mitochondrial function, and optimize our genetic expression to enhance overall quality of life. If you're in the longevity business, if you're in the pain business, if you're in the performance business, if you're in the aesthetic business, you want to apply non-thermal low-level laser. So mitochondrial settings. Here's my mitochondrial setting, 4-9-16-32. And I'm going to turn the um, camera on in, in a split second. And my skin setting is 5, 20, 35, 112. So it, for me, if you want to improve the mitochondria, you want to speed up the mitophagy in any specific area or in a, in a body part, I'll show you how to do that in a moment. And that's the skin setting. So, you know, for me, you know, getting a little longer in the tooth, if you will, you want to work with the skin, especially in aesthetic, you would do this. So I am now going to turn it on. Come on, hey everybody, say hi. Let me see you say hi. I've got me EVRL here. And if I wanted to get more mitochondria in my face, I would just laser my face with the appropriate setting so far. They were just asking me if I needed a model. If I wanted to do it to my arm, I would just laser it. So now you're getting mitochondria. So I will just take the laser with a lot of patients and I'm not getting fancy. I'm not trying to woo anybody. I just laser over. So I have the EVRL here. Ah, uh, EVRL, a cronia violet red laser. The cronia violet red laser very simply has a red and a violet light. So you get both 
properties. And we talked about the red being great for wound healing, ATP, the violet really more for antibacteria, pathogen, antifungal, et cetera. So let's go on to the next one. AMPK, why do I talk about AMPK? AMPK is a great pathway in that when you really look at this, we want to stimulate the AMPK pathway. It's not talked enough by medical doctors enough, unfortunately. But when you look at what it can do, it increases blood flow, it increases glucose uptake, allows for fatty acid synthesis, mitochondrial biogenesis, glycogen synthesis, protein synthesis, fatty acid synthesis. It also allows the, the blockage of cytokine and eicosanoid synthesis. So, um, whoops, sorry, I can no longer see my camera. It's probably fine. Um, May May, if you could send someone in here, that would be great. So my intermittent fasting protocol. My intermittent fasting, I do this with all my patients. So I give them intermittent fasting. Can anybody hear me? Okay. So my CNN, my, my SCN right here. You okay? Come on in. Guys and gals, you're lucky. I got the boss here. You want to do it right here? I'm having a little trouble getting the um, camera up. It's on, but I can't see it. But that's fine. You can wait for everybody. So I'll put it in here and I'll put it in for three minutes, right in the super cosmetic nucleus. The brain protocol that I use for that is 1, 5, 10, 20. And then for three minutes, I'll go to the gut. You understand? Normally, I'd have them sit down, but it would be 4, 4, 9, 26. That is my master, Dr. Rob's master gut protocol. Write that down. Anytime you put a laser on the gut, it's 4, 4, 9, 26. Do you mind? It's up here. And you can also use the FX. <clears throat> Comfortable? Mm -hmm. And you can do it if you if you stack, which I'm a big believer in stacking. If you stack the FX with a handheld. You can now do it simultaneously for your intermittent fasting protocol. If you guys have any questions, put it up. I can see you beep. I just can't see myself. Okay, I'll let you. Can they see me? They can see me. So rebalance the nervous system. Okay, that's going to be easy. There's going to be three ways to rebalance the nervous system for longevity. You know, why don't we sit here and place that one? So typically, here's a couple of easy things you could do. So just put your arm out. I should probably go to the other side because the other side is. No, no, it's fine. Press up. Okay. This is the side that's bad. Ah, I fixed it yesterday. <laughs> so you do a muscle test and just laser in the area. Now, that's one way of rebalancing the nervous system. Better way is doing nerve root, doing the spine, or spine from nerve root. Another way is to take the muscle, go from origin to insertion. So there's three ways to balance the nervous system for me. Number one, just laser in the area where the nerve is. Number two, go from the spine to the nerve root with your handy dandy EBRL. And number three, go from origin to insertion. Now, I understand that's a muscle and that's not a nerve. And when all fails in the upper body, go right to the brachial plexus. So if anybody has any questions on those protocols, please let me know. I don't see anybody populating at this point. Hi, Rob. Just, um, I think that the attendees can't see you. Is everything okay with the camera there? Can they see Mamey? I can see you, but the rest of the attendees can't see you. 
No? All right, let's try this again. I'm gonna, it says click, it says people can see me. So I just, let's turn back on. See, you should be able to see me now. Actually, my head's cut off. Yeah. I'll, I'll put aside of her. People can see us. Is there anything that they asked so far in the protocols? I just have one question here mm -hmm. from one at the uh, Is toenail fungus best cleared using violet alone? Well, that, that's like. Yes. You can do it alone without question. I still always like to add the red and the red with it because the red's good for, for wound healing. Why not? I mean, you're in the aesthetic, we get fungus in different areas. I like it with the wound healing and the ATP activation. However, yeah, I, I lost you. Um, so I would do it with both together. Do you have any other questions? Not at the moment. Okay, well, let's keep going. Um, I'm gonna move this. Let me see if I can do this. I want to move this down. I'll put that down there. Okay. So people talk just hold on a second. People talk about lasering for gut health, and people ask why. I am resolute on lasering for gut health. So why do I laser for gut health? What's my take? Non-thermal laser helps conditions such as irritable bowel syndrome, irritable bowel disease, Crohn's, ulcerative cries, and leaky gut. If you want to help your gut to brain axis, your gut immune axis, your gut to joint axis, your aesthetics, your longevity, you want to laser the gut. Come on. So photobiomimics, that's, a, that's an article that I wrote. Again, uh, Jasmina has that article. It really speaks about the idea of the photonic energy turning around the microbiome and altering it. Now, here's some of the keys about just simply lasering the gut, and I'll give you a protocol in a second. Lasering the gut can positively affect the microbiome through the daily circadian rhythm. So when you match with your circadian rhythm, that is the big one of the big positives to intermittent fasting. So you do the protocol that I just did and make sure you laser the gut in addition to it, which should be part of it, you're gonna sync with your circadian rhythm and get all the health benefits. Now, interesting, the circadian rhythm actually regulates levels of metabolites. Those metabolites are like short chain fatty acids. So now you've got functional neurology, functional medicine, meeting low, le low level non-thermal laser therapy together. If you have a disrupted circadian rhythm, you're gonna produce a lot of excess bad bacteria and even have an expression of that endotoxin called LPS. Favorable improvement when lasering bacteria 400 fold. I'll say that again, 400 fold. There was a significant difference between a laser pointer and a real non-thermal laser and the microbial diversity. Lastly, adding the violet light, the violet blue light, killed a lot of the egregious bacteria like P. originosa, P. gingivitis, H. pylori, and staphoresis. Incidentally, P. gingivitis, 90% of people who have Alzheimer's have P. gingivitis. So I have gingivitis. I'm suffering through it. I've suffered through with it since I'm 12. Everything else is good, but the P. gingivitis is a problem. I'll meet somebody else. Um, or you. Um, P. gingivitis is an issue, and that's an aside. Look at the result. Violet light ex exerts direct antimicrobial activity in your P. originosa and breaks biofilms. So bacteria in the body is like an igloo. It's encapsulated. This violet light breaks up these bacteria igloos. The NIH has said that 80% of bacterial infections have a bacteria igloo. You've got to have an EVRL or an FX405 to break these up to keep good gut health to allow for the longevity that we just spoke about. And there's my FX protocol. Do you understand? Just make yourself like you're working for you.
Hi Rob, I've got, I've got a question regarding oh, numbers yeah, the protocols. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So, hold on one sec. Yep. Only because I can't hear you when I go to the back of the room. No problem. So I set her up and she's got the FX405. If this was a 635, I could stack with the EVRL and get a dual purpose. This happens to be the 405 on her, but it was a 635, which I have right over here. You can double and you can stack. Now my gut protocol, my master gut protocol, everybody, you know I mean, treat the gut. If you're putting in four frequencies with a handheld, it is 44926. If you're using one of the FXs where you get six frequencies allowed, it's 4926926. That's me that you had a question. Okay, yeah, I've got a question. Um, one uh, a gentleman is asking, where are you getting these numbers from? I guess he's referring to the protocol numbers and also curious where the numbers came from in the book. Well, then I can only speak to what I did. The numbers in a book, you're talking about uh, Jerome Maruka's book, they're probably based on Royal Rife. Um, my numbers are more based on tr more trial and error, and there's actually specific articles for gut and brain now, vagus nerve, that we've honed in on. Um, also, when I've done some of my case studies, this is what I've used to get the outcomes versus other numbers. So it's a very good question. I'm not a frequency guy. Simon and I know that. You know that as well, Jasmina. But yeah. people want, they need something to punch in. 44926 I found to be extraordinarily effective for gut overall health. Just as an aside, the frequency in which the light hits the skin, if it's 35 or less, usually means more acute condition. Now understand that obviously we're talking about acute condition with the gut on an everyday basis. So do you have another question? Yeah, any particular setting for both lights with chronic fungus? Well, if you're going to use the violet alone, it would be a continuous one. So you would go to the acne setting and go. If it's the other one, I actually have to look up my fungus setting. I have it on another slide. I just, my my, um, my laser's already set like you guys preset it. So I can't remember, but make note and we'll get them that. Okay. Okay. Then we've got another one. How to treat leg ulcers on elderly person? How to treat an elderly person? Uh, how to treat leg ulcers on elderly person? Ulcers. Oh, leg ulcers, sorry. Um, good question, wound healing, 916-4253. Would I also, if you have the red light, great. If you have the red and the violet light, even better, because the violet light will kill any bacteria, fungal pathogen in the area, 916-4253. Great for wound healing. We have another one. Hmm? So I've got another question. How often hmm. should you treat someone with any of these gut health problems? So how many days a week and how many weeks? Fabulous question. I mean, these are great questions, aren't they? Yeah. How long, how much? Now we're talking about something that's real. Now we're not talking about something that's abstract. For me, for a gut, I like to treat everybody two to three times a week for four to eight weeks, but please hold on. Do they have an upset stomach? Two weeks. Do they have a tight junction issue? One month, six weeks. They have LPS, it could be three months. The more damage that's indicated on any diagnostic test, obviously the longer the treatment time, but I usually start three times a week for the first two to four weeks, then the next two to four weeks, twice a week, and then the last set, if we're gonna go into that three months period, once a week. Let me tell you this, if you treat somebody twice a week for four weeks in their gut, you will be a hero. That's the only way I can describe it. You will be a hero. The change in patient outcomes by lasering the gut and adding the vagus nerve, which I'll sh I think everybody has seen me do the vagus nerve, but I'll do it right here. So the, the laser go the laser, the vagus nerve goes from the medulla oblongata down through the transverse colon. So with Meme, I'm going to 
go from the bottom of the brain stem, the medulla oblongata, and go over to the transverse colon. I would do three to five sweeps up and down. That'll take me a couple of quick minutes. Bilateral, clearly both sides. And they're gonna go into jugular foramen. Hopefully everybody can see on each side for 30 seconds. I'm gonna go in the auricular nerve. The auricular nerve is one one hundredth the size of the whole nerve, but it's got the most nerve endings. And it's great for autism. A lot of good studies on the acone laser for autism, by the way. In addition to that, then I would go to the right prefrontal cortex. Okay. So both sides. I'm sorry? I don't think we can see you. Could you see me, uh, Jasmine? I just got the boss told me that no one probably saw me. I can I can see you, and I think the rest of the attendees can see you. It all depends. I think probably somebody's have locked in through a mobile phone. Maybe they're having a problem with their connection, but okay. the rest of the people on any PC or MacBook or a laptop, they can see you. Um, I've got another great question here. Sure gentleman and he's asking i'm sure you're going to give him the uh, perfect answer for that uh can the laser fasten the recovery of, of sports injuries such as ankle twist broken bones etc so can the laser fasten the recovery of a sports injuries well i just skipped a whole bunch of slides just so you see Laser and muscle, human muscle tissue was an advantage in the sports performance. Laser applied before and after sports activity had profound impact on performance. They said that they were going to ban it because it was an unfair advantage for those who got lasered as compared to those who were not lasered. So that's performance. That's not the question he asked. He asked about ankle sprains and stuff. I think we need to, Simon, you, everybody, think we need to do a webinar on sports injuries, five of the more common ankle sprains. To the answer to the question is yes. I wouldn't want to treat a sports injury. I was 2015 sports chiropractic year without a laser. Okay, and there is another question here. Um, for Vegas, are you still using 10, 10, 10, 10? Yep, the perfect 10, like Bo Derek. Or excuse me, I should say Liz Hurley now, 10, 10, 10, 10. That's been shown in the data to be the frequency for the Vegas nerve. Okay, perfect. Great. So we'll carry on a little bit. Um, yeah. Believe it or not, laser shown to improve sleep. Laser improves brain function during sleep. So you want to laser yourself. Now, interesting that the 635 nanometer laser promotes the release of melatonin. I know David Sinclair and Andrew Huberman have been a little negative to melatonin. I think they're both icons. I disagree with them on this point. I think melatonin is medicinal. Melatonin is the new vitamin D. And the fact that you can get a benefit of laser with the release of melatonin really imbues me with enthusiasm to utilize it more. So again, laser, the red light significantly raised interleukin-10, like we said before. As interleukin-10 increases, which is a anti-inflammatory health-promoting interleukin, one of the few, it also inhibits the release of interleukin-6, interleukin-8. We've talked about that, interleukin-1-beta and TNF-alpha. So not only does it turn the switch on of promoting health and anti-inflammation, it shuts off the pro-inflammatory pathways as well. It is a key master switch. In addition to that, interleukin-10 also regulates the switch of M1 to M2 phenotypes. So you've got macrophages and microglials. Everybody knows that microglials and macrophages is the central nervous system. They clean up. They're like vacuum cleaners. M1 are very pro-inflammatory. M2 are anti-inflammatory. So to help the switch from M1 to M2, really allows you not to have the detrimental effects of too much proverbial cleanup. Very few things switch the switch of an M1 to an M2 microglial. Here's an anti-inflammatory laser uh, for protocols for whole body. So people want inflammation. So here you go. Carotid and jugular arteries, 9, 16, 42, 27, 20, two to three minutes, 1620, 2 to 3 minutes. Over the liver, 
and you can do this also not just with the EVRL, you can also do it with your FX 635, 405, uh, 410, 100, 528, that's my liver, thymus, 520, 48, 625, and always finish with the gut. My master gut protocol, once again, is 4, 4, 9, 26. Immune resilience. Can I borrow you one more time? Please stop. So for immune rejuvenation, immune resilience, I'm going to take the FX 635 and 405 and put it in the gut, just like the picture shows. Uh, gut positioning, as you'll see, the middle arm will be in the gut, the outside is on in the lug field. And I will take the EVRL and go on the cervical spine. So same as before. Is there any chance you can lower the camera down, Rob? Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna stand here. I can't see it. Just let me know. Does it look okay? Can you see me? Yeah, it looks like a little bit more up, more up. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, hold on there. Okay. Great. Yeah. And in the cervical area, and now this is an immune rejuvenation, immune resilient protocol. Immune setting, my immune setting is 10, 20, 40, 73. And I'm going to come back. Can you hold that there? So she's actually raising herself, helping her out her immune system as I come back to here. We did this slide. That's me lasering my brain at home. So I have an FX. I've invested in one to laser myself at home. Non-thermal laser has a positive effect on Parkinson's disease. It showed an increase in gait by 30%, cognitivity 38%, and Alzheimer's. There's a lot of quadruple blind test studies done with Alzheimer's disease because non-thermal laser can directly disassemble amyloid beta in vitro in vivo. And obviously if you pack it with some nutrition, coenzyme Q10 is the choice. Why am I sharing this? Well, real simple, I'm, I'm sharing it for a simple reason, Parkinson's and Alzheimer's will definitely take years off your health span and some years off your lifespan. So everybody who's watching live or Memorex, please, everybody, go join my Dr. Rob's Laser Mastermind group. I answer questions. People put in case studies. It is our way to communicate. I have almost 1,300 people. Love you to join my Dr. Rob's Mastermind Laser group on Facebook. I'll leave that there for a second so you can shoot. And the next one is a question. So do we have any questions? Oh, also. It appears that I will be in Heathrow, correct, Jasmina? Saturday and Sunday, September 1st and 2nd. It will be uh, a hands-on yes. protocol. Yes, there will be uh, um, another one, part two of this uh, webinar, but that's going to be in person, obviously, with you. And uh, it's going to be the 2nd on the 3rd of September. Uh, we're going to be doing... Uh, the probably down south but we haven't still uh decided the, uh, of the location we haven't finalized the location but we might have one in the midlands or manchester area as well so it will be on the second or the third of september yeah okay i got the dates wrong but it's that first weekend um, so we'll we'll see you soon here so again anybody follow me on social media Etc. Um, we do posts every day. We have a whole social media team here. Um, and we're always posting on laser stuff. I'm going to take her off the laser right now so she can go back to work. And you also, guys I would like to remind everyone that the PDF of this presentation will be sent over to uh, everybody who have uh, registered for this webinar today. So you will get the PDF of this presentation. So, do you have any more questions? Okay, let me see now. Um, there is a question, is there any information on operational injuries, for example, after dental operation, recovery time? Okay, full disclosure. 
I just had an extraction of a tooth. I had um, an injury. I got an infection years ago. I have suffered from gingivitis. And as my oral surgeon said, I'm the healthiest guy that's ever lost a tooth. I'm in the process of getting an implant. And very, you know, I, I don't, I'm happy it's not in the front, it's further back. So I don't think anybody saw it because my flipper tooth doesn't fit. That said, I just went back two days after the surgery. So they pull the tooth out, they open it, they pack up the gum because they're trying to build bone because an implant is basically a, a tooth screwed into an area. And if they don't have bone, they have to do a graft. And he's got stitches. I still have stitches in there. And, um, and I did not take any pain meds. So everybody be happy about that. I avoided the NSAIDs. And um, he said, Rob, I've never seen anybody heal. You know, I'm not 21. What are you doing? Well, I'm doing assortment of nutrition. You know, I try and keep myself in good health. I've been lasering myself six times a day for 10 minutes. Every break I get, I laser because it was over the weekend. So, man, if anything is a missing link that we don't talk about enough, it's how laser helps with dental and periodontal issues. I should have been lasering my gums virtually every day other than worrying about the full <laughs> massage. <laughs> okay. That is I have a question from a gentleman, and he's asking what would the wavelength numbers be for the Parkinson's or Alzheimer's protocol? Okay, so there's, a, there's some interesting things. Dr. Uh, Trevor Barry's got his master uh, brain protocol of 110, 40, 60. There's, I use some different ones. You have to use 40 because 40 is for Alzheimer's, that's for sure. So I'll give you a couple. You could use his, I think it's fabulous. I use 15, excuse me, I use 110, 20, 40. So there's six that you want to pick from 1, 5, 10, 20, 40, 60. Now, if you're going to just do cerebellum, it's 10, 13, 10, 13. So I have a whole new list of brain frequencies coming out. But I did answer his question. For Alzheimer's, 40 is the one that you, without question, want to make sure that you have repetitively needed. Perfect. Thank you. Do you have any others? Not at the moment. All right, oh, there so is one me... question we just came through. Sorry to sorry to interrupt, Dr. Rob. Um, does it make a huge difference changing frequencies to the outcome? It's the icing on the cake. I think if you worry about the frequency, it will paralyze you. I think if you have the frequency already in the laser and you press the button, I think you have gold. It gives you 10%, but it's not everything. When people, what's this, what's that? And they're racing around and they're fuddling around with it. I think they're losing the power of the frequency. So if I were to give you the most important thing or the most important things, number one, wavelength. Number two, power or low power. We're using milliwatts, so you never really heat up. You never have any detrimental. You don't have any hormetic thresholds. Number three, collimated coherent light. Number four, laser diodes. These are patented laser diodes. And then five, which you probably saw and you've seen me do in other um, presentations, moving the laser. And of course, number six, you really want for musculoskeletal outcomes, pulsing of the light. Then the frequency is, you know, it's the icing on the cake, but it's not the treatment. Are we good? No, I've got, I've got um, another question here. I think it's the, from the lady previously who has asked you about the vagal nerve setting, about the 10, 10, 10, 10. That's She's it. asking, can we stack the frequency settings, for example, the immune settings, then the inflammatory settings, etc.? I'm not sure what she's asking. I'm sorry. Can I? Those? 
I think that's what she was asking for, correct? Waiting for an answer. If she can come back to me and... Um... Well, they're going to get the PDF, so it'll be fine. Yeah, the PDF will be sent over to everyone um, alongside uh, with this webinar recording as well. Okay. Any any other ones? Not at the moment. Okay. Well, if they have any questions, join a group. Jasmine is part of my group. And it's been my pleasure. I hope to see you in person at the beginning of September. Um, remember, I am American, so it's hot brewed organic coffee, not so much the tea, sorry. And a um, little oat milk or almond milk, and we're ready to go. Okay, so uh, the lady just came back to me again, and she's saying, can I do more than one protocol in one session? Sure. You can do as many as you like, as many as you feel that the patient needs. Yeah. So there's no harm here of doing it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think, yeah, I think that's all at the moment. All right, so everybody, it's my pleasure. Jasmina, always a pleasure. Simon. Okay. Yeah, hey. thank you very much, Dr. Silverman, for hosting this webinar tonight. And thank you everyone who have attended tonight as well. So yes, don't forget the recording will be sent out to every single attendee and for those ones who registered as well. And the PDF of Dr. Silverman's presentation will be sent as well. So if you have any further questions, please feel free to drop us a message or email. We will be happy to answer. So thank you very much as well and uh, see you next time. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.